We're going to make a dried floral arrangement in this container. I'm using both roses that were dried by hanging upside down in this, and I'm also using roses that were dried in silica gel. We're gonna make this display, and I'm gonna show you how I did it right now. And I will show you some of my pottery and how I selected this pot. Well, no, I'll actually show you when I selected this pot. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all. And the reason why I didn't bother drying the small roses in silica gel was because I already had used up all my silica gel and so I still had more roses to dry so I decided to hang them upside down and they came out really good. One of the reasons that the small roses may have come out better than a large rose by hanging upside down is that the rose has less moisture in it. It's smaller, it'll dry quicker. Another thing you wanna be sure of is to catch your roses before they start to wilt. If your rose is starting to sag or wilt, at that point, you really have to do it in the silica gel or you'll just lose all the petals. Your roses should keep for a couple years in good condition after you've dried them. The flowers I'm using in this video are like these, dried by hanging upside down, or like these, which I dried by using silica gel beads, which is really the preferred method of drying so that you get a really beautiful flower shape. It does take about a month. You put them into the silica gel beads, fully covered and then you put a lid on your container, whatever it is, a box or close it up and put it away for two weeks to 30 days and you will have a beautiful dried rose. Now the roses that you dry by hanging upside down, they can be a little trickier. You do need to start with a fresher rose. I have had success even if the roses were starting to droop a little by hanging upside down, but it's best if you get roses that are in perfect condition when you dry them. Also, I, there are some instructions on the silica gel packet where you could actually use silica gel in the microwave. I do not recommend that. It really burns the color out of the flowers. So I would only do that in the case that you were going to spray paint your flowers. Like say, you were crazy enough to spray paint your flowers gold. Well, then um, it wouldn't matter if you burnt the petals or not. But in most cases, I would say, use your silica gel beads cold. Now, silica gel beads are pretty much infinitely recyclable. You do lose some. If you shake things that have been in the silica gel beads, you can kind of sometimes hear the silica gel beads still in your flowers. But this one here was definitely silica gel. I made this grapevine and hook thing to hang my flowers off. It looks really cute by my back door. I am looking for a nice piece of pottery that I made to make this arrangement in. This one is a really nice shape. I like that gold edge, but I think it's a little brighter than I want based on the color of flowers that we're using today. Let's see, what do we have here? We have some mugs. No, we're not gonna make pottery in a mug. Ooh, those are daisy petals. Those are dried. They fell off some daisies. So I was trying to do some fragile flowers in the silica gel and it didn't work. And that's what I ended up with. So I could use this water pitcher, but no, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. These are nice, um, good shape, and so is this one, wider. That one would hold a few more flowers than the other one based on the size. This one is huge and kind of the wrong color scheme for this floral, oh, there we go. That's the one I want. So let's take this into the kitchen and make our flower arrangement. I have sphagnum peat moss and it's this kind of crusty stuff, but it's really great for hiding your foam. What, that's wet foam right there. I'm not gonna use wet foam. I'm gonna use this dry foam. This stuff makes a big mess. You could just stuff it in here and decorate your flowers into it, or you could put your foam in here. I'm cutting up my foam to fit into my container and then I'm checking it for wobble. If it wobbles a lot, I'm gonna wanna tailor the bottom a little bit to fit the shape of the inside of the container. It's super simple. I mean, you don't even have to be very neat about it or anything. I'm just shaving it down a little bit because the inside is narrower than the, the inside bottom is narrower. The inside bottom is narrower than the top part. So then I'm just gonna take some moss, whatever way is the best way to. I don't even know if it's called sphagnum peat moss. I need to look that up and see what it's really called. But anyway, they sell this uh, peat moss at the craft store. It's a cardinal sin to show floral foam. So now I'm just testing the height. I know like based on the size of my pot, 
I know about how big I want my floral arrangement to be. It's a three and a half inch pot, so I am going to make it probably about three and a half inches tall from there. So the pot is about half the height of the finished product. And I'm just uh, deciding where I'm going to cut the roses based on how far down I want it to go in. So I'm measuring it according to where I want it to cut. Always cut it longer, test it, and then cut it shorter because you can't add back stick to it without a pain in the butt, you know, and some glue. So just go ahead and just be more careful when you, um, ah, I mean, be careful in the first place. When we cut our flowers, we have to be careful. <laughs> I'm just cutting it on an angle to kind of give it a spiky tip. So it, it pokes in there pretty good. So let's, um, you might have to wiggle it and work it past that peat because if you're, if you're directly on a piece of the peat, it just makes it harder to push it in. I'm trying for a kind of a, a rounded top on my floral arrangement. I'm not doing an irregular shape today. I'm kind of just making an arch with the flowers just, and trying to get them in there where I like them. And just a lot of it is looking, you know, looking at the placement of the flowers just to see where they look nice, set them next to each other, try not to have too many flowers that are similar together. If you do have to put flowers that are similar together, try to do it in groups of threes or fives, just depending on your display. This particular, um, that's a weed. I found that in a field near my house and when they dry out, they look like that. And they're really, they're really beautiful when they're fresh. But that one I happened to find later and it's just gonna go great with this kind of rustic muted color scheme that I'm doing. I love when I find beautiful flowers just out there in nature for free. <laughs> it's like finding money. Because when you shop for roses, I guess you know, like even even at the cheapest, which is Costco typically, um, you'll find a dozen roses, or actually I think you get two dozen roses at Costco for $17.99. And that really starts to add up. But you find free flowers, yay! You can make such beautiful arrangements with wildflowers and native grasses that may just be growing up, you know, on the side of the road or in a field or something near your home. So those are always great for us to look for. So. Let me know if you like to pick wildflowers and you find them a joy also. I used to think I was terrible at doing flower arrangements, but I just kept working at it and working at it until I found that I could place things nicely. One of the really best cheats is that foam because once you put the flower in place, it stays there and holds it. So one of the difficulties I had when learning to arrange flowers was that I did not, uh, I didn't know how to get the flowers to stay put. And then you can then you can sort them out how you like them but there are different techniques that florists use that include like crisscrossing the stems to make the stems support each other or using the shape of the vase to hold the stems in place when they lean them like all the way to the edge and when you use a glass vase it's very important to hide how you were or not show for that matter exactly what it is that's supporting all your flowers and holding them in place Sometimes people use green floral wire that hides very well to hold to hold different flowers where they belong and space properly. Or sometimes they squish flowers together really hard, but here I'm having a little air space between my flowers. This pink one is completely wrong color scheme. My favorite is definitely the silica gel for drying the flowers. The leaves keep their shape really well and they don't crinkle up as much, so you get a larger flower, I think. I mean, I didn't measure it, but I'm pretty sure the flower can stay a little bit larger. Even with the silica gel though, you will get some waviness in the flower petals. The red roses, they do get very dark no matter how you dry them. So if you're going to dry flowers, I do recommend you pick the lightest color flowers you can other than white. White dried flowers, tend to discolor just a little more. So the peaches and the oranges and the pinks are my favorite colors to do in dried flowers. I just love them. I think they're so beautiful and I think it makes your home look more glamorous to have fresh flowers. And I know that they're, it's just not possible for people to have fresh flowers all the time. It can get very expensive. And especially in the time of year when the flowers are out of season where you are. So uh, that's why the dried flowers, and from a distance, people cannot tell that they're dried flowers. They get up close and they can kind of tell that they're dried flowers. But even so, the look of it is very elegant and 
and uh, depending on the color schemes that you choose with your dried flowers, this kind of color scheme kind of lends more to a, a country farmhouse look. So I'm wondering what you guys think about hanging the flowers versus silica gel. Have you tried either version? The hanging, there's not a lot to tell about it. You just don't want to crush them against a wall or something. So that's why it's good to have the hooks that are pulled away from the wall a little bit because if it's pressed against a wall, you'll probably get a flat side on your flower. You can also hang them from a light fixture in your house or hook from the ceiling. I don't recommend putting them outdoors unless you live in a very dry climate like uh, Albuquerque or something. You know, if you live in New Mexico or Las Vegas, or uh, Reno, Nevada, <laughs> one of those places you could probably hang your flowers outside or in a covered space outside. But here in Texas, it's a little bit humid outside. So I dry my flowers uh, just hanging off that hook I showed you. And you just turn them upside down. Keep the stem on when you hang them. And then when you do silica gel, you actually trim off the flower head, leaving just an inch or so of stem at the bottom and you dry it in your silica beads and then you hot glue it back to a stem again or attach it in some other way to a styrofoam ball and make like a round arrangement in a styrofoam ball or a ball that's covered in moss. And you can use those, those pins that are kind of shaped like a U. They have two points on them and it holds stuff down. You can use those to hook it to the ball and then you can stab your rose stems into a ball like that or just hot glue to the surface if you're crazy like that. Yeah, but I try to put as many flowers into my arrangement as I can. And then I really look at it and I, when I find a dark spot, then I look for a bright colored flower to stick into it. So uh, this is getting pretty good right now. I think it needs something else. So I'm gonna go look around the house and see if I can find anything for it. So I'm gonna steal some stuff out of it to use in today's floral arrangement. I'm gonna steal some stuff to use from this flower arrangement in today's floral arrangement. How many times can you say arrange? Let's talk about bouquets. Oh, what a lovely bouquet. Thank you. Thank you. That stem is just made out of a skewer and wrapped with that waxy tape, that floral tape, because I didn't have any sticks that day and it may have been cold and I may not have wanted to go outside. <laughs> so um, you can, I can take sticks from a tree in the yard or you can use a skewer and cover it in floral tape or you can if your arrangement is a pale color you can just use you know just use the skewer color surround yourself with beauty because it's worth it that's why I am using pliers to place this stem in because if I use my hands my big chunky no just kidding my hands are tiny but even with my tiny hands I can't really get that spike push down. So using pliers is a great way to get between the flowers and get, get that arrangement done. A little space in here that I wanted to just add a little more interest. And I found this grass that looks like wheat and I have some other grasses that look like, I think they're called bunny tails, but I, I did find them out in the wild here. And you should see this, look at this guy. That's George. Um, if you haven't seen my George videos, my most recent videos about George, you really should because George is a great character. And my, it's not my husband's name. The dog, the dog is George. If a flower doesn't work, you just set it aside. Maybe it'll fit in your next arrangement. I love dried flowers because you're not in a rush to use them. You can just, I just keep them in this basket. When I find something that I want to decorate, then I have dried flowers ready to go. They're not always committed to something. Using pliers is great for pushing flowers down because your hands are so big that they just, you know, you can't get between the flowers. And if you hit these flowers hard enough, you will crumble them. So they're not as fragile. Somebody asked me the other day, one of you wonderful viewers, <laughs> one of my great viewers asked me if flowers dried in silica gel were as delicate as flowers that are pressed and no they are not as delicate as flowers that are pressed pressed flowers just are um more fragile because they don't shrink at all while they're drying and that is my opinion so just you have to be so careful when handling the pressed flowers when making um, some kind of display out of them but i really love that with silica gel you you're not limited to a two-dimensional display of your flowers with silica gel, you really, you retain most of the beauty of the flowers. Nothing is gonna be as beautiful as a fresh flower. Nothing, not resin or any of the other ways of 
preserving flowers are as beautiful as fresh flowers. It's just impossible. So nature provides the most beautiful flower there is, and we can only do second best here. So I hope that your Valentine's flowers are being preserved. And I think maybe that's why you're here. Tell me what you think. Um, have you dried flowers in silica gel? Have you tried hanging your flowers upside down? Are you having any luck with it? Are your flower petals falling out? If your flower petals are falling out, you probably need to just put them in a bowl. No, if your flower petals are falling out, it's probably because you started too late. You waited too many days with your flower fresh before trying to dry it. So just get them sooner next time. So if you enjoyed this channel, you may enjoy my other channel called Tiny Chick Pottery. And uh, oh, don't forget to use your dried flower preservative spray. Typically I spray this outside, but um, it is negative 10 today. So I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> probably not negative 10. It was probably 10 degrees, but anyway, it's cold outside. So I'm using my preservative spray in the house despite all recommendations. And yeah, it stinks. So <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Have a great day.